as you respond to all the all the questions asked. Thank you, Mozilla. Good evening to all of you. Thank you for introducing me. For me, it's a great chance to be here, to be at the Open University of Cyprus in the framework of Erasmus Plus program. It's a great chance for me to gain some new experience, to see how everything is organized here. And I hope that this visit will be beneficial for both you and me and for my future professional career as well. So as one of my interests, one of the field I'm into is political discourse and political debates. So one of the lectures organized in the framework of my mobility the topic of the lecture is dedicated to political discourse and political debates. And the main idea and the main like task is to reveal the functional potential of political speeches. The examples which were selected in the presentation and while the research was done were taken from the speeches of Barack Obama and his main opponent during their elect, uh, presidential election campaign. Uh, I will be very grateful for any questions, for any comments from you, and I will be ready to see them on chat. So to start with, I would like to say that there is no doubt that on today's international arena, political communication is a very special area, which is closely connected with the social and political structure of society. Due to the fact that political language is the primary means of influence on social behavior, the issue of political discourse study and the ways of its reasoning evoke great interest in the modern language policy. The problem of interaction between language and power is extremely important in terms of changing geopolitical balance in the world, and it has found its expression in the political discourse, which can be defined as a set of all speech acts in the political debate, as well as a set of public policy rules that have, have been formed under existing traditions and tested by the experience. Moreover, the issue of political debate becomes more relevant in the light of intensification of international politics and cross-cultural communication. The social purpose of political discourse is to demonstrate the necessity of politically correct actions or assessments to the recipients. Other words, the purpose of political discourse is not only to describe, but at the same time to persuade the recipient, prompting him to justify beliefs and move to action. In general, the language of any politician is operated by certain symbols, which are about freedom, democracy, law, equality in the society, and its success can be explained by the fact how these symbols are coherent with the public consciousness. Every politician should be able to touch the desired spring in the public mind, and his statements should cause support among the recipients who are the direct participants of political discourse. With the aim to achieve desirable effect, different types and models of argumentation are widely used in political debate. So argumentation is one of the tools which can help us to reveal the potential, the functional potential of the political speech. One of the main definitions of argumentation is given as the following. So it's the speech act that includes a system of statements intended to convince the audience 
with the opinion, which can be either accepted or rejected by the audience, is correct. Van Dyck and other researchers consider the argumentation to be one of speech or communication strategies, and the speech strategy in its turn is, used, is viewed as a general plan of verbal behavior expressed by the way the speaker chooses a system of phased acts of speech. So to influence the audience, the speaker uses argumentation because uh, like any strategy, argumentation has its own ways of achieving goals, which are to be called tactics. So here we can speak about tactics, which are like the components of the strategy. Each of the tactics is a definite speech action in the process of verbal strategy, the aim of which is to salute to the communication task of the strategy, and it uses definite form of reasoning, as well as some rational and emotional arguments. It is through tactics of argumentation politic politicians can influence the formation of opinions and beliefs of voters. To avoid this impact, one should be aware of these tactics and be able to recognize them in the speech. The argumentation has also its own tactics that aim to convince the audience that the speaker's opinions and views are correct. It is considered that one of the main tactics of political discourse is a strategy of identification that is identification of politics with the people. During the election campaigns, candidates, on the one hand, try to persuade voters that they, the candidates, are unique. But on the other hand, they try to keep the image of ordinary people. It is believed that ordinary people trust those politicians who are similar to them more. So the candidates are trying to create an image of average people speaking the same language as their voters, as well as trying to convince the audience that politician is the person close to them. Another effective technique for politicians to become closer to the people is to mention the members of their own families, friends and people who help to achieve success in life and career in the speeches. Demonstration of family love, child care, gratitude for the support to friends is, is a vivid example of such tactic which can be implemented in the speeches, for example, of Barack Obama. So the examples given here are taken from one of the speech where he mentions his, life, his love of all his life, Michelle Obama, his daughters, Malia and Sasha. So he speaks about his love to his family. I love you so much and I'm proud of you. And they are so-called indicators of candidates' humanity, and of course, it has a significant impact on voters. A matter of common knowledge is that the power of persuasive speech increases if it is touches or contains problems that cause people personal interest. In other words, the individual getting interested in something fundamentally agrees with the position of the speaker. Such kind of interest is caused by the tactics of emotional pressure. This tactic is implemented through such method as an appeal to the emotions, parental feelings, an appeal to the fear of children's lives, referring to traditional family values, the future of young generations, women's rights, and peaceful life. So the example which are given here can demonstrate how everything is organized and how, how these notions work. So if to speak about emotions and parental feelings, so different expressions where member families, family members are mentioned, are present in the speech. 
So the speaker can speak about the future of the children, about the health care of young generation, about the education of children and fate of the whole nation in general. The speaker can be deeply concerned about women's rights, protection of national security, and so on and so forth. The example given here are also taken from one of the speeches of Barack Obama. One more effective tactic is the tactic of appeal to authority, which is based on statistics data and research results, which are introduced by the speaker as his arguments. This tactic has a significant impact on the audience as the accuracy of the sources used raises no doubts, although everyone knows that statistics may be wrong and scientists can make a mistake. However, the speaker finds great support among the audience as his message is mostly based on rational arguments. An important argument for the election speech is the support by authority leaders. If the speaker has gained the support of the leaders who are highly respected by the majority of population, indisputable fact is that he, the speaker, is moving in the right direction. Although this tactic in a speech is demonstrated by the only fact that the speaker is grateful for the trust and support, it has a significant impact on the audience. Special attention in political discourse reasoning should be paid to the tactic creating certainty and neutrality. Applying this kind of tactic, the speaker firstly gives a well-known fact and then expresses his own opinion on the issue, combining parts of the sentence with coordinating conjunct conjunction but, as it is given in the example. Yes, government must lead on energy independence, but each of us must do our part to make our homes and businesses more efficient. So as we can see, Barack Obama agrees that the government should get rid of dependence on foreign energy supplies, but at the same time, he expresses the idea that people should use the available energy resources in a rational way. So here we can see the two parts of the sentences combining with the conjunction but and the kind of contradiction given. Besides that, a strategy of argumentation often involves the usage of contrasting tactic, the method of contrast and opposition. The audience is offered something in contrast, which demonstrates the advantages or disadvantages of phenomenon or object being discussed. Due to evaluative component available, such contrasting approach is becoming influ influential. This tactic is applied by candidates in cases when they want to emphasize their disagreement with the issue suggested. So the example which is given is the following. Senator Obama wants our schools to answer to unions and entrenched bureaucracies. I want schools to answer to parents and students. So the quotation by John McCain, which was addressed to Barack Obama. So here we can <clears throat> we can see how the contrast or contrasting approach is used in the example. Politician expresses his attitude to the problem, which is opposed to his opponent's point of view. The next, uh, the usage of this tactic uh, helps the speaker encourage the voters to take the only possible correct decision. The process of defining opponents' weaknesses and drawbacks, which is also very important for every politician leader to be able to stress on, to highlight the weaknesses and 
the drawbacks of the main opponent. So such process can create a less attractive image of a politician for voters. But only those ones who approve of applying the tactic of attack. That means the attack is able to increase the dominance of the candidate who attacks by lowering the attractiveness of opponents. The worse they look, the better image of the speaker is on their background. Criticizing his opponent, the following example can be given. Washington has been talking about our oil addiction for the last 30 years. And by the way, John McCain has been there for 26 of them. Barack Obama gives examples of their inaction, indicating a specific period of time. He also points to the decisions taken by his opponent, which were not for the benefits of the society. Today, we import triple the amount of oil than we had. So in order to show the weak points and drawbacks, in of his opponents, the politicians can use different tools and tactics of argumentation, as the example shows us. In order to strengthen the effect of the emotional impact of argumentation, the speaker, the politician, or Barack Obama in our example uses repetitions, which not only create the rhythm of the speech, but also emphasize the neg negative actions of the opponent. Note to higher fuel efficiency standards for cars. Note to investments in renewable energy. Note to renewable fuels. So repetition is used in order to highlight, to put a stress, to highlight, to put an emphasis. To summarize the message, the speaker uses empathetic construction like no, now is the time to do that and that. And in such way, he expressed his own, own point of view and his own vision how the things should be organized. However, sharp criticism towards the opponent can be considered being unethical and can cause the protest. That is why it is highly advisable to neutralize the opponent before criticizing him. Firstly, showing respect to him and emphasizing that he is a worthy opponent and a brilliant politician, but at the same time, expressing out that he is capable of making a mistake as every ordinary person. So neutralize, show respect, and only then stress out on weak sides. To demonstrate confidence and firmness in personal views, the following constructions are used in the speeches of politicians. For example, let there be no doubt. I profoundly disagree. To criticize the opponent, multi nouns which show respect to him are chosen, such as bravery and distinction, courage and heroism, and to demonstrate friendship and warm relations with the opponent, the words such strength, friendship together are often introduced in the speech. The culmination of the tactic applied are the construction introduced again with the conjunction but. but the recorder's clear, but I profoundly disagree. So the main point is that the conjunction is to be put in the first place. And the obvious fact is that these are the exact constructions to neutralize the opponent as they express politicians' disagreement with his opponent's actions. So it can be summarized and it can be mentioned, reasoning in political discourse is implemented through a series of tactics 
the main purpose of which is to influence the thoughts and the opinions of the audience and convince the people that the position of the speaker is correct and should be supported. For the, um, the main purpose of political discourse is to convince, as it was already mentioned, through the direct influence. So for this reason, politicians use different means of argumentation in producing various arguments and facts, as well as methods of persuasion. And the argumentation has some methods to achieve the aim. So these methods, as it was already mentioned, are called tactics, and we have, we have already had a look at them. So um, moreover, it should be pointed out that it cannot be enough just to know tactics, as it is very important to be able and to be capable of applying them correctly. That is why every politician should keep to the rules of, it, of argumentation while he or she is delivering the speech. However, politicians have different approaches to implementation of reasoning in their speeches. As a result, make different impression on the audience, which fully trust one speaker and do not trust at all another one. One more effective way for a political speech to reveal, or one more effective way how to reveal the potential, with the functional potential of political speech and how to reach its full potential is through structure and semantics. So just uh, to clear out, so semantics, the study of the meaning of the words and sentences, you, which uses the relations of linguistic forms to non-linguistic concepts and mental representations to explain how sentences are understood by native speakers. Let's have a look at how semantic space and stylistic resources of language in the political debate are arranged, especially when not very pleasant issues are approached. Because it's of crucial importance to be able to speak about some negative things and some unpleasant issues. The way politicians approach delicate and unpleasant subjects is considered to be of vital importance. And it is rather challenging in politics to appear polite and sensitive trying to win people's favor, and at the same time, attack a politician opponent. Political actors tend to avoid words or expressions that may have unpleasant association in order not to give a negative impression to their audiences. To this end, they resort to euphemism. Euphemism is a word or expression used in place of one that is deemed offensive or suggests something unpleasant, can be figuratively called a whitewashing device. In other words, it is a safe way to deal with certain embarrassing topics without being politically incorrect or breaking a social convention. As an example of language used with a social purpose, political language is breeding ground for euphemism. Having analyzed corpus materials, the following groups of euphemisms have been revealed in the speeches of Barack Obama, Mitt Romney. So, and they can be grouped, and the groups are the following. So, for example, the group of euphemisms which are directly, which directly exclude any racial or ethnic discrimination. So, the examples are given here from the speeches of President Obama's election night speech and his address to the State of the Union, the State of the Union speech as well. So, for example, to avoid being impolite or name the things not in a um, not very pleasant way, unpleasant way, 
such devices or lexical devices or tools can be used. So the second group which was found was the group of euphemisms that contribute to avoidance of discrimination on the gender affiliation. And the euphemisms against discrimination based on health status and those that exclude age discrimination. So examples given here as well. So for example, millions of seniors who are seeing their prescription drug prices lower because it was the right thing to do. So seniors. So here we can understand that we speak about people, elderly people, people of old age, like old people. So eliminating health insurance for millions of poor and elderly and disabled Americans on Medi-Aid. So it's again, again, we can speak that the issues are about health status, about, about age and health issues. The next group of euthanies was the one which was about um, in which were found the words used in order to distract the attention of audience from the negative economic factors. So the examples given here, no matter what you look like, whether you own a factory or you work on the factory floor. So here we can see like the example to own a factory and quite opposite, meaning to work on the factory floor. We all know families making deep sacrifices just to get by. That you can live, that you can live a good, solid and middle class life. So these are the examples from the remarks by the president of the American Jobs Act. And we can see that the special like phrases and collocations are used to hide or to camouflage some negative factors and issues in the sphere of economic life of the society. And also the group of euthanisms aimed to expose wrong decisions and actions taken by the opponents. The example is, uh, is given here is the following. The way he talks about them, it seems as if he thinks these are a bunch of nameless government bureaucrats that we need to cut back on. So again, so to expose wrong decisions, the people who are associated with the process of wrong decision making. So is the example here. Due to the end of the war, the withdrawal of troops from Iraq and the desire to emphasize the state's contribution to solving the, the conflict, a considerable number of euphemisms was recorded in the statements of the US president dedicated to armed conflicts and their consequences. So, and as a result, the group of euphemisms connected with armed conflicts and their consequences was highlighted. So the examples given here, like brave men and women in uniform. So it's about the armed forces of the US Army. So all in all, it can be mentioned that the research has revealed the main reasons for using euphemisms in political discourse among which we distinguish the necessity to keep the rules of cultural and political correctness that exist in society as well as to avoid publicity and mass dissatisfaction. The motives for the usage of euphemisms in public speeches by Barack Obama they write depending on the area of social political life which makes possible to differentiate political euthanisms in special spheres of economics, domestic and foreign policy, in armed conflicts and in the area of political correctness. Besides that, it can be mentioned that the majority of euthanisms in 
Obama's speeches are directed to highlight the multinational aspect of the citizens as well as their equal rights, regardless of their income, social status, physical disability, color of the skin, and origin. Most of them play moderating and conspiratorial functions, conveying those ideas which have become a social taboo and are too embarrassing to mention directly. Thus, it can be summarized and mentioned that euthanasians in political discourse belong to so-called tools for manipulation that are used with the aim to create the control, the recipient's outlook and ideology. So a good tool to control the outlook and to create ideology desired. The use, one more aspect and one more like sphere where the potential of political speeches can be revealed is through the usage of idioms, so-called phraseological units or phrases that when taken as a whole has a meaning which you wouldn't be able to deduce from the meaning of the individual words. So the meaning can be conveyed from just word by word translation. And the usage of idioms has also proved to be an effective way to make a political speech more functional and appealing. So having classified some of the expressions, uh, we are able to identify and distinguish the following groups of expressions. So, for example, the phraseological units or the idioms um, which are about financial difficulties in the country. For example, the phraseological unit to leave somebody holding a bag. So, obvious thing is that it's about people who are jobless, who are unemployed, and as a result, they do not have do not have enough money for their everyday expenses and it's difficult for them to make their ends meet, to dig into a pocket, to make ends meet, to be wiped out. So one more group of idioms that can be distinguished is the group which, a group of idioms which identify problems related to employment and unemployment issues. So the idiom like to ship, to ship jobs overseas again about the problem of unemployment and the people who are forced to leave their country and look for better prospects somewhere abroad. Next group is about the phrases, phraseological unit which identify problems connected with the legal crossing of border and immigration example, the idiom like to put more boots on the border, it's also about a high number of people who are crossing the border, about immigration. So the idioms which identify a decline in the level of economic development, to be on the ropes, to tear down regulations, to hit the bottom. So the group indicating fair rules of political game, to play the same super set of rules, to play the long game, to play by the rules, group indicating positive aspects of political and economic, economic development of the state, to write the ship, to become the next Steve Jobs. So it's about some positive and, and um, positive economic development like trends and movements in the society. So in the Corpus of the material analyzed idiomatic expression with a negative connotation prevail. That is interesting. So, in order to attract the attention of the speaker, recipient to maybe some negative aspects and issues which are taking place in the society, so idioms are used as a kind of tool. Then we can also mentioned that in the course of 
analysis, it became clear that the aerator uses various stylistic devices to produce a deep impression on the audience. So due to them, Obama concentrates people's attention on the necessary semantic elements and thus makes up a rhythmical trajectory of his speech. And the later makes the speech easy to be understood and to be interpreted. As a result, the politician can easily put the accent on his vision of political situation and persuade the electorate to vote for him. Thus, the political, so just to sum up and to finish, I would like to summarize and say the following. So political debate is a complex of mental process, processes, both individual and collective. Communicative pragmatic functions are aimed at sending messages and cover a wide range of pragmatic tasks. The politicians introduce facts, events, or figures in order to be able to express their own attitude to the events described, evaluate them, and motivate the recipients, the audience, to come up with their conclusion. And the information received modifies people's consciousness and encourages them to take certain actions. So them correctly built speech is a key to future success of every politician every day it was like that it is like that and hopefully it will be like that in future as well so that was like a short overview of some tools so-called tools which help to reveal the whole functional potential of the political features there are lots of other tools and techniques as well but these were some of the, those which attract the researchers and are interested are interesting to be to be worked with so i would like to have any questions to have the comments and will be more than happy to be engaged into a kind of discussion. So as far as I understood, something is wrong with speakers. So I will be waiting for the commands or questions here in the chat. Okay. So thank you for, for the question here. So it, um, if I understood correctly, euphemism was used as a tool of constructing social identities with less friction possible. Would you say that political correctness is used as a common denominator in this process? So, right. So uh, speaking about euphem uh, euphemism, so they are used and they were used in the speeches with the aim to hide some negative issues and to hide some not so very pleasant topics for the discussion and and political correctness is like the main like denominator and every politician who is looking for a potential electorate is considered is is um, not considered but is obsessed with the idea of being of being the light and correct while addressing to the recipients to the audience so that's why to hide some unpleasant issues topics youth meetings are 
present, there are lots of them, and political correctness is the crucial moment as well for every politician. So thank you for your questions and let's wait for some more questions. So for every politician is a great irony, of course, irony is, thank you for the question, is irony a tool, is a tool in speeches, right? So irony is one of the tools as well, irony, sarcasm, so it's also a tool to be used, but again, not to create the image of not so very like positive and pleasant politician, it is a very like thin line and a politician should be very careful while using this tool as well. So irony and sarcasm, they are also present in, in the speeches, but they are of like very special like character and it, it is advised to be very careful with them, right? Irony, sarcasm, they are present as well. So, do you suggest specific duration in speeches nowadays? So, what do you mean by the specific duration in speeches? So, how should it, I understand it? So the duration of the speech given by the politician. So if I understood it correctly, if it is about the duration of the speech, so it should be not too long in order not to overwhelm <coughs> the audience. How many minutes should the speech last? Uh, so I understand it like that. But thank you for in giving the information, additional information. So I think it shouldn't be so long in order not to overwhelm <clears throat> the audience because people nowadays are not ready to accept too much information and we are not like interested and we are not eager to read too long posts, for example, on the social media as well as we are not interested, we are not eager and willing to listen to too long speeches. That's why it should be very compact, very brief, containing the main information which is to be presented to the audience and containing the set of tools which will help the speaker to like, create the desirable result, persuade the audience to bring forward the message and to share his own opinion. So minutes, how many minutes should the speech last? It's an interesting question about the minutes. Actually, I have never thought about it, about the minutes. It's the issue maybe of speech writers. Maybe you have some of the ideas how many minutes it should last. 10 minutes. So Maybe depending on the issue, depending on the topic, depending on the audience, maybe the duration can vary. But as I think, it shouldn't be like a bit long. Okay, so let's wait for some more questions coming. Up to 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. So 10 minutes maybe is not enough. Up to 18 minutes. That is the point. Maybe 
Yeah. So speech writing. Speech writing is also a kind of uh, it's like the sphere in which professionals are engaged using all the possible techniques and tools in order to create powerful and successful speech for, for a politician. So speech writing and speech writers are the professionals who can know everything about all the aspects and peculiarities of the process, how to build, how to create, how to structure it properly. Any other questions or comments? Actually, I don't know exactly what are the spheres you are majoring in. So whether political discourse and political debates are close to your main interests, but in general, the topic of political debates, political discourse, and the function of political speech is interested to people from different spheres, from different areas. Because time from time in our life, we are the potential, we are the potential members of the audience to whom the political speech is addressed. And we are those people who are to feel the usage of all these tools, tactics, tactics of argumentations of those phraseological units and all the tools mentioned and not only them. So we are those who hear them and who accept the information, receive the information. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. So that was a kind of small research and the examples were from Obama's features. But it seems to me that a very interesting research can be done if to take these features by Trump, the president of the USA because his features are also full of different tools, different phraseological units, phrases, and it's like the topic to feather researchers. So thank you again for your comments. Thank you for your interest in the topic. Thank you for hosting me at the university and giving me a chance to be here today and to share some of my some of my very small and tiny researchers with you.